Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's update on COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Speaking on behalf of the province today are Dr. Jennifer Russell, the province's Chief Medical Officer of Health, and the Honorable Dorothy Shepard, Minister of Health. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's update on COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Speaking on behalf of the province today are the province's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Jennifer Russell, and the Honorable Dorothy Shepard, Minister of Health, Dr. Russell. Before I begin my remarks today, I have the sad duty to report that another New Brunswicker has died as a result of COVID-19. An individual aged 40 to 49, residing in Zone 1, which is Moncton and Southeast New Brunswick, has died due to underlying medical complications, including COVID-19. We have now seen 30 deaths since the COVID-19 pandemic began one year ago. I want to send my deepest sympathies to the family and friends of this individual. My thoughts and prayers are with everyone who has been impacted by this tragic loss. Before I my remarks today, I have the sad duty to report that another New Brunswicker has died as a result of COVID-19. An individual aged 40 to 49, residing in Zone 1, which is Moncton and Southeast New Brunswick, has died due to underlying medical complications, including COVID-19. We have now seen 30 deaths since the COVID-19 pandemic began one year ago. I want to send my deepest sympathies to the family and friends of this individual. My thoughts and prayers are with everyone who has been impacted by this tragic loss. This is sad news for all New Brunswickers, but I am confident that better times are ahead in our journey through this pandemic. Get ready to roll up your sleeves because vaccines are on their way, New Brunswickers. We do have a plan to get a dose of protection against the COVID-19 virus into every New Brunswicker between now and Canada Day. We are moving forward with a significant acceleration of our vaccination plan. The premier the first phase of the plan to inoculate the very vulnerable residents of nursing homes and other adult residential facilities, frontline healthcare workers, and First Nation residents is almost complete. We are now moving on to the second phase, which will advance much more rapidly than we had originally planned. With an ever-increasing supply of vaccines and new scientific evidence supporting a delay in administering the vaccine's second dose, we will be able to complete the work of inoculating all New Brunswickers much more quickly. This is the plan to inoculate the very vulnerable residents of nursing homes and other health care in, sorry, and other residential facilities, frontline health care workers and First Nation residents is almost complete. We are now moving into the second phase, which will advance much more rapidly than we had originally planned. With an ever-increasing supply of vaccines and new scientific evidence supporting a delay in administering the vaccine second dose, we will be able to complete the work of inoculating all New Brunswickers much more quickly. The All-Party Cabinet Committee on COVID-19 and Cabinet has approved an updated vaccine rollout and this plan, um, Minister Shepard will be speaking to the details very shortly. Our plan will ensure an equitable distribution of vaccines across the province. It will give priority to those who continue to be at a greater risk from the COVID-19 virus, not only from the effects of severe outcomes, but also the effects of transmission. It will use the resources of the public health care system and our partners in community pharmacies. It will allow us to build immunity to the virus in our population. It will enable our economy to keep moving by providing vaccinations to New Brunswickers like truckers, rotational workers, and regular cross-border commuters who travel outside the province for work. And in time, it will make it possible for us to loosen some of the restrictions now in place for public movement and gatherings. But as we move into this next phase of our recovery plan, it remains vital that everyone remain on guard against COVID-19. 
mute their mics, please. S'il vous plaît, si vous pouvez mettre votre micro. Please mute your mic. I can hear a lot of noise on the phone. Étant donné, because it takes 14 days for the vaccine to be fully effective, everyone, including those recently vaccinated, must follow public health advice and guidance. While we get vaccines into the arms of New Brunswickers, we must all continue to wear a mask in indoor public spaces. Everyone must keep two meters of physical distance between themselves and others whenever possible. As we move into the next phase of our recovery plan, it does remain vital that everyone remain on guard against COVID-19. Because it takes at least 14 days for the vaccine to be fully effective, everyone, including those recently vaccinated, must continue to follow public health advice and guidance. While we get vaccines into the arms of New Brunswickers, we must all continue to wear a mask in indoor public spaces. Everyone must keep two meters of physical distance between themselves and others when possible. We must all watch for symptoms of COVID-19 and stay home from work or school when symptoms emerge. We really do need to keep getting tested. I can't stress this enough. We have to keep our testing numbers as high as possible to make sure that we're very confident in our statistics and in our data and, and in protecting our population. So if you even have mild symptoms, please get tested. The finish line is now within sight, but we are not there yet. We must maintain our focus on limiting the impact of COVID-19 on New Brunswickers, and this is especially true in light of the variants. We know that in places like Ontario, they went from 30% of the cases being related to variants of concern to now 40% of the cases are being um, uh, are as a result of variants of concern. And we are seeing surges in cases in Ontario and, and indeed uh, stricter measures and lockdowns in certain areas. Aujourd'hui, il y a trois... Today, there are three new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick, all of which are in Zone 1, which is Moncton and southeastern New Brunswick. Two of these cases are contacts of a previous case related to travel. The third case remains under investigation. We now have 33 active cases of COVID-19 in the province. This includes one individual now in hospital. As always, I ask that you keep these fellow New Brunswickers in your thoughts and prayers. Your support is continually needed and always appreciated by those whose lives are touched by this virus. Today, there are three new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick, all of which are in Zone 1, which is Moncton and southeastern New Brunswick. Two of these are contacts of a previous case related to travel, and one remains under investigation. We now have 33 active cases of COVID-19 in the province. This includes one individual now in hospital. As always, I ask that you keep these fellow New Brunswickers in your thoughts and prayers. Your support is continually needed and always appreciated by those whose lives are touched by the virus. The vaccine campaign that began in December is nearing the end of its first phase. DC by next Wednesday, we expect that every New Brunswicker living in a nursing home or an adult residential facility will have received at least one dose of a vaccine. On that same day, we will move into the next phase of our campaign, as vaccine appointments at local pharmacies will be available to all New Brunswickers over the age of 85. Please bear in mind that only people over the age of 85 or someone calling on their behalf should book a vaccine appointment at this time. Opportunities for other age and work groups will follow shortly. By next Wednesday, we expect that every New Brunswicker living in a nursing home or adult residential facility will have received at least one dose of a vaccine. And on that same day, we will move into the next phase of our campaign as vaccine appointments at local pharmacies will be available to New Brunswickers over the age of 85. Please bear in mind that only people over the age of 85 or someone calling on their behalf should book a vaccine appointment at this time. Opportunities for other age and work groups will follow shortly. Please be patient, your turn is coming. And I can't stress this enough in the sense that we do know that in other jurisdictions, um, systems have become overwhelmed with people making lots of phone calls, et cetera. Please wait your turn. As of right now, it's for those people that are 85 years and older.
During the remainder of March, we will provide vaccines to a number of higher risk groups, including healthcare workers and people with complex medical conditions. As mentioned, we will give priority to people who regularly cross our borders, including rotational workers, to reduce importation of new cases into our province. In April and May, with sufficient supply, we will provide vaccines to New Brunswickers over the age of 60, as well as to people aged 40 to 59 who are vulnerable to infection due to medical conditions. And we will have some information that we'll be sending out to healthcare providers about these conditions. If all goes according to plan, every New Brunswicker should have the opportunity to receive their first dose of, COVID va of a COVID-19 vaccine by the end of June. That is great news, and we are really very much looking forward to those doses being uh, uh, put in the arms of New Brunswickers. There are a number of factors that have enabled us to accelerate our vaccine campaign. We are now receiving a much larger volume of the mRNA vaccines manufactured by Pfizer and Moderna. Great news. We are very, very excited about this. We have information from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization that delaying the second dose for up to 120 days is scientifically sound. And really and truly across the country, we do have a consensus that trying to vaccinate as much of the population with at least one dose is the safest approach at this time to protect our population. Another factor is the arrival of new and more user-friendly vaccines. During March, New Brunswick will receive our first shipment of 10,500 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine recently approved for use in Canada. A further 50,000 doses of this vaccine are expected to be delivered during April and May. The new vaccine does not require ultra-cold storage or freezer freezing, as is the case with vaccines now in use, and this will enable us to extend the reach of our vaccine campaign. During the next phase, the AstraZeneca vaccine will be provided to several groups of first responders, as well as to others providing frontline services to the public. It will also be used to vaccinate extramural program clients under the age of 65 who are unable to travel to community vaccination clinics. With the recent approval by Health Canada of a fourth vaccine manufactured by Janssen, we can plan to add our, to our vaccine supply as we move through the spring and summer. I want to remind everyone that all vaccines approved by Health Canada are effective in preventing severe outcomes of COVID-19. When your turn comes, please take whichever vaccine is provided to you. The more people that get immunized, the quicker we will achieve a level of protection across our population. And this will be an exciting time for New Brunswick and its people. Every week, we will have more stories to share of family and friends receiving protection from this virus that we have been living with for over the past year. And I did receive anecdotal information today from um, uh, a, a citizen whereby their mother-in-law, who is 92 years old, did receive their appointments for their first and their second doses of vaccine. So we must keep this in context. Receiving the vaccine will not end the pandemic, but it will help to reduce the most severe impacts of the virus, including ICU admissions and deaths. We will continue to live with COVID-19 for some time to come. And as the virus continues to be present in the rest of North America, there will be more outbreaks here in New Brunswick, which is unfortunate. Um, but when they happen, we will respond with swift and sure measures as we have done for the past 12 months. And as we've seen recently in Zone 7 in the Miramichi when we actually had an outbreak involving the variants, uh, the UK variant in particular. After a year, we all know what we must do to limit the spread of COVID-19. I urge all New Brunswickers to continue to protect your friends, families, and loved ones. We are getting through this. In the weeks ahead, we will make a giant leap forward in our journey toward a new normal. Let's continue to work together so that we will all arrive safely at our destination. Thank you very much. Merci, Bruce. Merci, Dr. Russell. Good afternoon, bonjour. Sadly, today we are mourning the loss of another person who has died as a result of underlying conditions, including COVID-19. On behalf of all New Brunswickers, I want to extend sincere condolences to the loved ones of this individual. You are in our thoughts and prayers at this difficult time. As Dr. Russell has said, more vaccines are coming. And this is good news for New Brunswick. More vaccines mean we can move up our distribution timeline and get vaccines into the arms of New Brunswickers sooner than expected. The more people who are immunized against COVID-19, the harder it is for the virus to spread. 
That, along with following the restrictions associated with the alert level you are in, will save lives. As well, more vaccinations will allow us to lift further restrictions. We have updated our rollout plan based on the increased number of vaccines we are expecting. Using all vaccine available as a first dose by Canada Day will significantly improve protection for every New Brunswicker. We are taking this approach based on Health Canada's approval of additional vaccines, the confirmation of more doses coming to Canada and to New Brunswick, and the new guidance on dose intervals indicating the second dose of the vaccine can now be delayed up to four months. First dose clinics for residents of all licensed long-term care facilities in New Brunswick are expected to be completed by March 17th. Clinics took place this week to vaccinate more than 10,400 people, including residents and staff at 56 licensed long-term care facilities. Clinics have been held in First Nations communities this week and will continue next week to offer the first dose of vaccine to community members aged 16 and over. It is expected that all First Nation residents will receive their first dose by March the 19th. To ensure we can continue to vaccinate New Brunswickers in a timely and efficient manner, we have been in discussions with our partners, including Pharmacists, Horizon Health Network, and Vitalite Health Network. As was announced yesterday, beginning next week, community pharmacists will start vaccinating eligible New Brunswickers. For right now, eligible New Brunswickers are individuals 85 years of age and over. Vaccines in community pharmacies will be appointment-based, and appointments can be booked by people who are 85 years of age or older or by their caregiver or family member. Walk-in appointments will not be available. Some pharmacies may have an online booking tool on their website, and you are encouraged to check before calling. If you're not comfortable booking online, seek someone out who, could, who might make it possible. And if that isn't an option, you can call a pharmacy for further information about how to make an appointment. It is important that you only book one appointment in one location. Our collective success depends on everyone working together to ensure that none of our vaccine is wasted. Also, please do not call a doctor to get your vaccine. Primary care providers will play a role in the vaccination plan in the months ahead. However, they are not administering vaccines in their office at this time and will not be accepting appointments with patients for that reason. Once those aged 85 and older have had an opportunity to get the vaccine, we will proceed with those who are age 80 and above, followed by those who are 75 and above. And if you're not yet 85 or older, or calling for someone who is, please do not make an appointment at this time. And I cannot stress that strongly enough. Your turn is coming. Please be patient. In addition to the community vaccine clinics, Horizon Health Network and Vitalite Health Network will be holding clinics next week to vaccinate groups such as first responders, healthcare workers, and health system staff. If you fall into one of these groups, you will be contacted directly about how to make an appointment for the vaccine. Individuals with complex medical conditions will also have an opportunity to get vaccinated at these clinics. To be determined if you're eligible, visit gnb.ca slash coronavirus and click on vaccine. The COVID-19 vaccine page on the GNB website also contains information on who is currently eligible to get the vaccine and how to sign up for an appointment. An announcement will be made when other priority groups and age groups are eligible to receive the vaccine based on supply, but currently the plan is as follows. People aged 75 and over as well as truckers and regular border commuters and rotational workers will be eligible to receive the coronavirus vaccine before the end of March. We had promised to address the burden placed on rotational workers and their families by the virus and have been able to do so by vaccinating rotational workers sooner in the updated vaccine rollout plan. Our goal is to be able to ease restrictions around their need to self-isolate as soon as we can.
We will share more information on this as it becomes available. Throughout April and May, residents and staff of communal settings, people between the ages of 40 and 59 with three or more chronic conditions, home care workers, long-term care volunteers, and those age 60 and older will be eligible to receive the vaccine. Extramural will be providing the vaccine to patients who are housebound and unable to travel during this period as well. Also, during the month of April and May, large employers of more than 200 employees will begin offering vaccine clinics to healthy members of their staff who are 65 and under. This will ease the burden on pharmacies, Horizon Health Network, and Vitalite Health Network so they can immunize more people. In June, those between 16 and 59 who have not been offered a first dose will be vaccinated and larger employers will continue to offer vaccination clinics. Second dose clinics are expected to begin in June, if not earlier. If all goes as planned, Every New Brunswicker who wants the vaccine will receive at least their first dose by the end of June. That is less than four months away. I appreciate that so many New Brunswickers want to receive the vaccine. I ask that you continue to be patient and to wait for your turn. New Brunswickers have played an invaluable role in keeping our COVID-19 numbers among the lowest in the country. And that's because New Brunswickers have been following public health advice and have avoided actions that would overwhelm services. In the same way, we ask you to wait your turn before trying to book an appointment for vaccinations. We have seen other provinces rolling out their vaccination program for members of the public. We've seen how booking systems elsewhere have been overwhelmed and how residents of some provinces have been forced to queue up to wait for vaccines. We don't want that to happen here. Our plan includes a gradual, sequential rollout. If you book an appointment but don't meet the eligibility, you will be turned away at your appointment without getting a vaccine. When that happens, not only are you taking a spot from someone who is eligible, but you are slowing down the overall process. Even with the increased rollout of vaccines across the province, it is important to remember that COVID-19 is still with us. We must all continue to work together to follow the advice of public health and to keep one another healthy and safe. I know this is a lot of information and that your first inclination is to reach out now to try and book your appointment. Please don't do that unless you are 85 years of age or older or calling on behalf of someone who is. I want to assure you that all of this information will be available online at the GNB website. You will also continue, we will also continue to share updates and we'll let you know when it's your turn to sign up and how to book your appointment. If you want to get the vaccine, you will have the opportunity to do so. We've gotten to this point by working together and that is how we will see this through. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Minister and Dr. Russell. Merci beaucoup, Ms. Shepherd and Dr. Russell. We'll now proceed with questions from members of the media. Each reporter will have one question. Please ensure you identify who you're addressing to answer your question. You have the right to pose your question in the language of your choice. Please ensure your microphones are placed on mute. Was that all? We will now be moving on to question from media. You can ask your question in the language of your choice. Each reporter will have one question. Please make sure to identify clearly the person you would like to answer your question. And also, please mute your microphones when you are not speaking. Heloise Rodriguez. Radio Canada. My question is for Dr. Russell. You mentioned many times uh, this topic. Can you tell us what lessons you've learned from other provinces on the vaccination campaign? What have you learned? Where, where do you think we can be better than other jurisdictions? 
That is a very good question. What we've learned from other jurisdictions is that if the planning is well done, for instance, that means making sure that there are spaces for people to get vaccinated, but also that it is easy to book an appointment to be vaccinated. That is something that's very complex and requires a lot of planning. If it's not well done, it means that a lot of people will be trying to get in touch to get their vaccine or information all at the same time, and it doesn't work. This is why we want to make sure that New Brunswickers are patient. And when you do get the information on how to contact a pharmacist or how to get to the place where you would be vaccinated, when you're told, for instance, if you're part of a health authority clinic, please wait for your turn. You will get all the information as the information becomes available. For the time being, the next group are the 85 and older. And so this vaccination will be done shortly. It is very important for us to have the cooperation from all New Brunswickers. Adam Hures, Brunswick News. Hi there. Uh, thanks for allowing me to take a question. Um, 60 year olds are now ahead of students on the uh, rollout list. I just wanted to get the, uh, some information behind why that decision was made. What's your question for Mr. Hures? Um, I can get the health minister. Thank you, Adam. So um, I've been trying to clarify in the past several days that the reason that um, 16 to 24 year olds were ahead of 60 to 69 was because we, at the time we proposed the first plan, we were not um, assured of supply. Uh, in fact, it was quite inconsistent um, with those assurances. So we were not assured of supply to get students vaccinated and clear their 14 day waiting time before the fall. Um, we actually didn't think we'd be able to get to students until the fall. So in wanting to return to some normalcy um, and knowing that public health measures work, um, we, were, we were proposing that 16 to 24 be done um, in, be, before that larger group. So um, as, as things have progressed, our supply has certainly um, grown substantially. We know that we're going to have much more supply than we were originally told, and we have confidence in that supply. So now we can go back to, um, back to the, age, um, the, the age groups that we had discussed earlier. That's really the short of it. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Marie Sutherland from CBC. Hi, my question is for um, Dr. Russell, I guess. Um, I'm wondering, you announced the uh, death of the person uh, in Zone 1 today. Is this the youngest person who's died of COVID-19 in the province? And, and were they staying at a long-term care home? Well, I think at this time there are people grieving in terms of family members. Um, and I think that uh, as of right now, it's very sad no matter what age people are when they pass away. Just for confidentiality reasons right now, I don't really want to release that information, but uh, we may come back to that. But um, obviously people of any age can have complications of, of COVID-19, but the higher your age and the more um, uh, comorbid conditions that you have, the higher your likelihood of bad outcomes, poor outcomes in, in, in terms of hospitalization, ICU admission and death. Thank you. Silas Brown, Global TV. Hi there. Uh, this is for, for whoever wants to uh, take a stab at answering this. Uh, we heard during the technical briefing that um, temporary foreign workers are not currently uh, in the, the vaccination rollout plan. These are workers that often work in close quarters and in very important um, you know, pieces of our economy, as we saw. Uh, last spring. Uh, so I, I'm curious around the decision to, to not have them included uh, in the rollout plan at this time. Hi Silas. Great question. Um, we are in a unique position in New Brunswick in the sense that last summer we had the advantage of, of learning from other jurisdictions prior to the arrival of our first temporary foreign workers. And given the information that we had from other jurisdictions with respect to outbreaks, et cetera, we made sure that all temporary foreign workers were self-isolating for 14 days and received a day 10 test 
um, when they uh, had been in self-isolation. And what we learned from that experience was very positive that every single person who was a temporary foreign worker who self-isolated properly um, and then tested positive on day 10 did not transmit to anyone else. So we were very confident after that experience that we could contain COVID-19 cases that would happen to uh, arrive with travelers who were temporary foreign workers. So at this time, we're not changing our approach since we know that approach works. Uh, but again, this is an evolving situation and we will always continue to review our approaches and policies. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Vicki Hogarth, CHCO. Thank you, Bruce. My question is for Dr. Russell or Minister Shepard. After receiving both shots, will people who've been fully vaccinated be able to leave the province and return without isolating for 14 days? And this includes, but isn't exclusive to rotational workers. So I'll, I'll start that one, Vicki. Um, basically, we have a lot of waiting to do right now, and, and we have a lot of patience that we have to exert at this time. We're still learning about what's going to happen uh, after these vaccines are given. As you know, uh, the first dose is not effective in terms of uh, efficacy of protecting a person from uh, the effects of COVID-19 until 14 days after the first dose. And uh, we are planning for most of the population to get that second dose uh, at the four-month mark, which is now uh, endorsed by NACI, the National Adult uh, National Advisory Committee on Immunization. And um, and so the people that will get that second dose, we will have to look at what uh, what the risks are and 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 what kind of measures we will have to continue to impose or not impose on on those individuals. And just to build on that, it, we oh. Just to build on that, we um, we know that COVID-19 and the variants are, you know, all around New Brunswick, um, maybe without the exception of, of Nova Scotia too much being as much a concern, but Ontario, Quebec, Maine are still are still dealing with these numbers and, and we have to be careful. So I think it's too early to talk about, um, to talk about, you know, uh, opening up for travel, um, we we will always be continuing to work, um, you know, with the with the with the data we receive, with our you know our colleagues in other provinces, and I think it's really important for us to just as 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 tiring as it is, we can't take these off in too big a bites because the data changes every day, and um, and every week. And so we need to be using the most up-to-date information we can. So I, I guess I would in the end just say, stay tuned. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Ms. Hogarth. Michelle Corriveau, Radio Canada. Hi, thanks, Bruce. My question is for Dr. Russell. Can you please Explain to us how vaccines will be distributed in various New Brunswick regions and to pharmacies. Do you mean how many doses will be given to pharmacies or how they will be transported? Michelle, can you elaborate on your question for Dr. Russell, please? Yes, of course. Basically, in some regions, people are worried about not having access to the vaccine in their region. So how will you make sure that there are enough vaccines in all the regions, even the smaller and most remote ones? So our planning included calculating a percentage of each age group in each region. The vaccine distribution per region will be based on the information available. It will be done on a per capita basis following the age and um, percentage of people living there. Minister Shepard would like to say something. So I, I just would like to add that we have 218 pharmacies throughout the province who have come on board to help us with the distribution of vaccine. And so we have a, um, a medical pharmaceutical company who is responsible for the distribution and, um, and whatever other resources they use uh, throughout the province. So we're confident that we'll, we'll reach everyone. Thank you, Ms. Shikoribo. Before we go to Jacques Quatre, Dr. Russell would like to add a point to Adam Harris's question. 
Yeah, so Adam had asked about um, that age group again, uh, the 18 to 24-year-olds, um, and compared to the 60-year-olds. And, and when NASI gives us recommendations around the priority groups, um, they do have a lens to look at all of the different groups with respect to risks uh, for, from age, from comorbidities, um, and uh, vulnerable settings. But they also look at um, what, what they see in terms of the risk for uh, transmission. And anecdotally, what we're seeing in certain outbreaks right now, including outbreaks with the variants, the variants of concern um, have about a 100% attack rate, which is different from the strains that we were used to seeing. Uh, so when they affect a daycare center or uh, restaurant staff, those are younger people, obviously, who are working in those facilities sometimes, um, public-facing uh, uh, workers and employees. So PEI has actually adopted an approach whereby um, front-facing, public-facing employees in that age group are going to be vaccinated. And, uh, and again, this will continue to evolve and change because of the variants and because of information that we're getting from other jurisdictions. But as of right now, we're comfortable with the plan the way, uh, the way it's uh, rolling out at the moment. Thank you, Dr. Jacques Poitra, CBC. Uh, I see on the plan graphic that people with complex medical conditions will be vaccinated in RHA clinics. Uh, What's the criteria for them establishing that they have a complex condition and how will people without family doctors go about that? That one with, with Dr. Russell. So a couple of points around that. Number one, we do have a list of what those complex medical conditions include, and we will have a way for people to be able to present that information to the pharmacy uh, locations where they'll be getting uh, immunized. Uh, for the RHA clinics, that part I would have to come back to you on, but my understanding right now we are going to be sending information out to um, healthcare providers around those complex medical conditions. It will be available, I'm assuming, on the website as well. So people will be able to see themselves and identify themselves that way. It's an honor system, so we won't be asking family physicians to document and, and uh, confirm that these people have these complex medical conditions. But again, we're taking people uh, at face value in an honor system as other jurisdictions are. And there will be, um, there will be um, vaccine um, command center that will help pharmacies uh, delineate some information if they have any questions. So we're, we're going to be as responsive um, in, in a very quick fashion um, so that we support pharmacies through the, and the RHAs through this process and extramural as well. Um, many pharmacists, of course, would have patient records that they're going to be dealing with with their, you know, their drugs alone can tell them what what many chronic conditions could be. Um, and also when it comes to um, the online, I believe there's going to be a significant amount of information online at the, um, at the uh, re request, um, request um, app for, um, for the vaccination. So, you know, w I won't say there won't be hurdles, but I think, I think on the whole, as Dr. Russell said, we have an honor system and I think most people will respect that. Thank you, Maria Vassanore to Canada. Justin Dupuis, La Quetzie Nouvelle. My question is for Dr. Russell. In media, we've seen some stories showing that nursing home staff, that some nursing home staff had decided not to get vaccinated. There seems to still be a lot of worries among population about the vaccines. Do you have a strategy or a plan maybe to encourage New Brunswickers to get the vaccine and a plan to, to answer these concerns? Absolutely. We have guidance and recommendations from the Public Health Agency of Canada and also our own New Brunswick Department of Health has a plan. We want to have all the information needed to inform people about vaccines and especially people who do have some vaccine hesitancy. Thank you. Laura Brown, CTV. Hi there. For either of you, we heard in the technical briefing that um, 
pharmacists don't necessarily have to get the vaccine before they administer the vaccine to however many people in their communities. I'm wondering if there's any concern about that. Obviously, we, we prioritize healthcare workers and those who work in long-term care homes, I, I suspect because of that reason. So I wonder if you're encouraging as many pharmacists to get it as possible or, or what's kind of your plans for that? So I'll take that one, and if uh, Minister Shepard wants to add, uh, my understanding is that all the pharmacies, all the pharmacists who will be involved in vaccination, have been offered uh, the vaccine in terms of this rollout uh, sooner rather than later. So I'm not sure why they wouldn't participate in those vaccine clinics or that opportunity. Um, obviously, any healthcare worker who has interactions with the public, uh, we are encouraging to get vaccinated. That's good. Long, Mayor Machine Leader. Good afternoon. My question is for either of you. Sure, what can answer? Uh, can you provide some clarification on the timeline for vaccine shipments to pharmacies? Because I, I understand that process is supposed to start on Wednesday the 17th, but I've spoken to some pharmacies in Mayor Machine who say they aren't receiving vaccine doses until uh, March 23rd. So I guess I can you uh, clarify that, please? It's my understanding that um, pharmacists will be ready to, um, to vaccinate um, those 85 years of age and over on March the 17th. That was the most recent information I received. Um, and I would suggest that um, any, you know, we have, we have provided pharmacists with, uh, I believe, a dedicated line to assist them, and I would, assi I would assume that they would, um, they would be calling that. We had a tremendous week, a really busy week from public health and the task force on, on the vaccine rollout. And I believe um, on Monday of this week or Tuesday of this week, we spoke with um, 500, hundreds of pharmacists. Um, and, and so, I, I can only only assume that that the vaccine deliveries will be there very soon. Just add. So again, just to add to what Minister Shepherd said, the, the vaccination rollout in terms of the delivery of those vaccines starts on March seventeenth, but it will continue throughout the week, um, throughout the end of the month. Thank you, Tom Bateman, Brunswick News. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, for Dr. Russell, uh, we heard from the Premier this week that he'll be speaking to his Atlantic counterparts about synchronizing a range of COVID-19 protocol and policies across the Atlantic provinces for things like uh, isolation requirements, uh, rotational workers, temporary foreign workers, vaccination schedules perhaps, maybe, uh, testing your contact tracing procedures. I just wonder if you could share perhaps from a, a medical perspective uh, you know, what this might involve and, and what, you know, what it will do to help combat the pandemic in this region and perhaps a timeline as well for seeing those adjustments made. Well, Tom, we actually have regular meetings with the Chief Medical Officers of Health from across the country uh, three times a week, and we met we meet once a week with our the Atlantic Chief Medical Officers of Health to really try to make sure that we are aligned in every way possible. We do have all the same information to work with in terms of the evidence-based information, but we always do tailor that information to our jurisdictions. And certainly, if we're going to move towards an Atlantic bubble, it would make complete sense for us to have as much alignment as possible. So I assume those discussions will continue to take place, and I assume they will be quite fruitful. Thank you, Mr. Bateman. Alexander McDougall from the Holton Pioneer Times. Hello, um, uh, for Health Minister Shepard, you mentioned something about um, essential workers crossing the border between uh, New Brunswick and Maine um, being eligible to have vaccinations about some time about um, end of March. I was just wondering if that, um, and then sort of just following up what, uh, what Ms. Hogarth was saying regarding um, with the new vaccine plans and uh, some of the, I know some of the zones are going to go from scheduled from orange to yellow too. I don't know if that would affect any of the uh, the international border crossing policy in terms of um, uh, family members maybe being able to go back again or um, just general policies like that. So 
daily commuters, um, those who regularly travel across the borders, um, truckers and rotational workers, are are being um, you know they're going to be able to book um, an appointment with a pharmacist. Um, um, most likely week after next, I think. And, uh, and so they'll get their vaccines earlier, which is helpful to, um, to slow the spread of COVID-19 and to protect themselves um, after that 14-day period. Um, with regards to opening the borders and any further bubbles, I think that that really is going to uh, depend on what is happening in our neighboring uh, jurisdictions. And and how you know how those conversations will come, but I think today, um, as I've said earlier, the data changes so quickly, the variant is um, ever present, and so we we will make those decisions based on um, based on data in in, in as uh, real time as we can. Thank you, Erica Butler, CHMA. I was going to ask a very similar question about people who travel regularly across the border. I, I, I guess I will I will ask, will people with shared child custody and people giving care to older adults who also are traveling frequently for those reasons, will they be included along with the regular cross-border commuters, rotational workers, truckers, and will they be able to get their first shot by the end of March, which seems very soon? I don't think I can answer that today, and I don't think I could. I could answer a yes. Um, I think that as um, as we progress and as the number of vaccinations go up, um, we as you know we can kind of um, presume that restrictions will start to come down. So I think that for now we have priorities based on on um, you know I guess urgencies. And uh, and we'll be we'll be progressing. I'm not saying no, especially when it comes to the custody arrangements, but um, but I think that we'll have to continue to stay updated on those things. And and um, parents inquiring should inquire before before doing traveling. Thank you, Hannah from the St. John Valley Times. Hi, sorry, I also have a kind of similar question, um, so apologies about that. But I'm wondering, you know, currently vaccine distribution in Maine is outpacing that in New Brunswick. I'm wondering, you know, as the side of the border, the U.S. side becomes more fully vaccinated, you know, if that will contribute to decisions about reopening the border, reconsidering travel restrictions. Dr. So will follow me because she can probably speak to the epidemiology of this. But but again, it is going to be all based on data. The amount of um, the amount of vaccine out there, theirs, ours, the amount of variant uh, that we might see, um, you know, in our midst. So it's going to be based on data um, and, and and consistently being updated. But that's when we'll make decisions. So the only other thing I have to add is that the the issue around the, the, the border with the U.S. is, is going to be discussed at the national level. So we will follow, you know, uh, those conversations. And, and as Minister Shepard said, we will continue to follow the epidemiology. Thank you. Maria Vassano, Radio Canada. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to uh, move your clocks forward Sunday morning. Don't forget to move your clocks forward Sunday morning. Very much. That concludes today's update. This concludes today's update. Thank you very much and have a good weekend.